Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and I normally talk about books on this channel. And when I do that, I often criticise authors, especially male authors, for sometimes misogynistic portrayal of female characters in their novels. And if you're interested in those uh, critiques, by the way, I will link my Feminist Rants playlist in the description box so you can check that out. But today I want to talk about the sort of comment I get Almost every time I make a video criticising something about a book. And that is usually something like this. If you don't like this book, write your own. So today I want to discuss why, hell no, I'm not going to write my own book. And why that is actually quite a stupid thing to say to someone. I shouldn't really have to make a whole discussion video about this because, at least to my mind, it seems pretty obvious why that sort of a comment does not withhold any kind of scrutiny. Uh, but here I am, so this one's for you in the back. First, let's look at what I think the purpose of these comments is. Is this really someone asking me to write a book with a fantastic female character so they can then go and read it? Is this really a commissioning of a work of art written by me with all of my expertise as a woman? No, of course not. What this is, is a an attempt at discrediting my opinion of a certain book or of a certain issue by claiming that because I myself have not written a novel uh, which fixes that issue, my opinion therefore isn't valid. Do you follow that logic? Because I don't. Uh, so again, for those who really need to hear this, today I'm going to explain to you the difference between writing a book and criticising a book. And therefore, the difference between being a novelist and being a critic. A creator of literature and a consumer of literature. Because you see, I am very much the second. I'm a consumer, I read books. Other than a few ill-fated attempts at Harry Potter fanfiction age 12, I have not produced a piece of creative writing in my life, and certainly not one that is worth reading. And I am not planning to either, because, just to reiterate this point, I am not a writer, I am not an author, I do not have that set of skills, or in fact, that set of motivations of creating a piece of fiction. But does that mean that I'm therefore not allowed to express my opinion on what other people have written? Of course not. The process of public review and public commentary and public criticism is essential to the whole life cycle, to the whole industry of the creative arts, including literature, including music, including theatre, including art, it's everything that is created for the purposes of consumption can be and should be and will inevitably be criticised, reviewed and discussed. So this very ridiculous attempt at silencing readers and reviewers' voices by saying, why don't you write your own, is first of all pointless, but also it makes you look real stupid. Because clearly, if you write a comment like that, you're not a person who understands the difference between a critic and an author. And that brings me to a similar sentiment that kind of makes me roll my eyes every time I see it. And that is the phrase, be the change you wish to see in the world. Uh, this is often attributed to Gandhi, but like 97.5% of all quotes attributed to Gandhi, he'd never actually said it. But that's beside the point. What does it even mean? Be the change you wish to see in the world. So, say for example, I don't like Boris Johnson. Does that mean I should become the Prime Minister? Even though I would be categorically the worst politician in the world? Uh, I don't like bananas. Does that mean I should start growing my own to make them less gross and disgusting? Do I need to become a fruit farmer now as well as Prime Minister? Being the change is not actually the most effective way to cause change, in my opinion. So, I propose that we stop saying, be the change you wish to see in the world, and instead we start saying, talk about the change you wish to see in the world. 
by talking about the things we don't like and expressing our own opinion, broadly speaking, we have a greater chance of actually causing the change we want to see in the world. For example, if I was to take the fake Gandhi advice and write a novel with an immaculately written female main character, then there would just be one more novel on the market that isn't dripping with misogyny. So what? All the people who told me to write my own novel are likely not going to read it. How much of a change have I actually caused by being the change? I would argue not very much, but if I make videos highlighting these issues that bother me with misogyny, then who knows how many books, future books, could be changed that way. Maybe, in the most direct sense, there is an author among my audience. Maybe there is someone who's just thinking about writing their first novel. Maybe my audience uh, includes one other reader who will carry the discussion further and talk about the issues that I've brought up with their friends and with their family and in their literary circles, which might include a prospective author. By shining a spotlight on the things that bother us, instead of just being quiet about it and becoming the change, we can create movements, both big and small, that bring about change on a much larger scale than any of us individually, with our own individual sets of skills, are capable of creating. We all need to play to our strengths. I'm not a writer, but maybe you are. Well, great, if you are, then use your voice through the power of the novel. Are you an Instagram model? I'm not, but maybe you are, and, and if so, then great, use your voice through the power of aesthetically pleasing images. Maybe you're a teacher, talk to your students. Maybe you are a child and talk to your parents. Talk to your friends, talk to your family, talk to your Twitter followers. Make your voice heard in any way you can and you are almost certain going to cause more change than if you were to keep your opinion to yourself and just quietly work on a novel or quietly work on making bananas less disgusting. I know that through this video I have kind of given the people who say something like, well, if you don't like this, make your own, a bit too much credit, a bit too much attention. I don't actually take these comments seriously. If someone tells me to write a novel instead of complaining about male authors, they don't actually want me to write a novel. They are not interested in reading my novel. In fact, they're probably not interested in reading the books that I'm actually criticizing. A huge majority of the kind of misogynist trolls that comment on my feminist videos haven't read the books that I'm talking about, which is always hilarious because they are just so keen to defend a male author that they will do that in response to someone who's read the book while they themselves have likely not read the book. So this isn't about you trolls out there. This isn't about the people trying to oppress the voices of reviewers and critics and commenters and loud people on Twitter. In this video, I am hoping to encourage you to become reviewers and critics and loud people on Twitter. You don't need to have your own YouTube channel to criticize things. You don't need to have a large following on social media. What you need to do is be critical in your approach to the things you consume. If you watch a TV show and something about it bothers you, think about what bothers you. Try and figure this out because that's sometimes harder than you think. And then talk about it and see if other people agree and see if other people disagree and be open to other people's opinions. But at the same time, make sure that other people's opinions are as founded as yours. So don't let yourself be talked down to by someone who hasn't watched the TV show that you're criticizing. Don't let yourself be talked out of the validity of your own opinion. And I think the more we talk about art and literature, the more we can change future art and literature being produced to make it more representative of us and our lives and our opinions. I hope any of this made sense. Please, respectfully, tell me what you think about this. Um, I also, I just want to make clear that if you take Be the Change You Want to See in the World to heart, 
then that is fine. I'm sure some people find this piece of advice very useful in fulfilling their own creative ideas and their own creative dreams. And if that quote helps you, then again, comment down below as well, And I, because I want to hear from you. If you are an author or a creator anyway, an artist, a musician, then tell me what you think of reviews and critics as well. Thank you for watching. Bye.